Lord, we are the ones called by your name. We humble ourselves now as we pray. Renouncing every sin in wicked way. We lift our voice to seek your face. And we say, Lord, send the rain. Pour out your spirit. Let the fires fall. Heal us one and all. Fall afresh on me. Holy, Holy Spirit, let the fire fall, heal us one and all, fall afresh on me. I said, Lord, we are the ones called by your name. We humble ourselves now as we pray. Renouncing every sin and wicked way. We lift our voice and seek your face as we say, Lord, in the rain. Pour out your spirit. Let the fires fall. Heal us one and all. Fall afresh on me. Lord, in the rain, pour out your spirit. Let the fires fall, heal us one and all, fall afresh on me. Holy, Holy Spirit, let the fires fall, heal us one and all. Fall afresh on me. Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I will be your narrator, Shenandoah Briscoe, and we are going to get through the Bible in one year. Today is day 55. We'll be covering Numbers 9 through 11 and Mark 5, 1 through 20. Father, I just ask for purity in voice and articulation so that this translation may be a blessing to you and to all of those who are listening. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. The Passover. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai. In the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt, he said, Have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the fourteenth day of this month, in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the fourteenth day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, We have become unclean because of a dead body. But why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time. Moses answered them, Wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites, When any of you or your descendants are unclean because of a dead body or are away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover but they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to, to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of it 
break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow the, all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremonially clean and not on a journey fails to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offerings at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sins. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Lord's Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulations for both the foreigner and the native-born. The Cloud Above the Tabernacle On the day of the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up and the cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, at, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites sat out. However, the cloud settled. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and, the, and at the, his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. And when the cloud remained over the tabernacle, they remained in the camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then, at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out, whether by day or by night. Whether the cloud lifted, they set out. Whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month, or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. And at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command throughout Moses. Through Moses. The Silver Trumpets The Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of hammered silver and use them for calling the community together and for having the camps set out. When both are sounded, the whole community is to assemble before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. If only one is sounded, the leaders and the heads of the clan of Israel are to assemble before you. When a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes cam camping on the east are to set out. At the sound of a second blast, the camps on the south are to set out. The blast will be a signal for setting out. And together, the assembly blow the trumpets, but not with the sig signal for setting out. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to blow the trumpets. This is to be a lasting ordinance for you and the generations to come. When you go into battle in your own land against any enemy who is opposing, oppressing you, sound a blast on the trumpets. Then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. Also, at your times of rejoicing, your appointed festivals, a new moon feasts, you are to sound the trumpets over your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, and they will be a memorial for you before your God. I am the Lord your God. The Israelites leave Sinai. On the twentieth day of the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle of the covenant law. Then the Israelites sat out from the desert of Sinai and traveled from place to place until the cloud came to rest in the desert of Paran. They sat out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah were first under their 
standard nations. Son of Amadad was in command. Nathaniel, son of Zur, was over the division of the tribe of Israel. And Elib, son of Helen, was over the division of the tribe of Zebulun. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and uh, Gershonites and Merarites who carried it sat out. The division of the camp of Ribbon went next under their standard. Eleazar, son of Shadur, was in command. Shelaman, Shelamiel, son of Zerishadiah, was over the division of the tribe of Simon. And Elisphan, son of Duel, was over the division of the tribe of Gad. Then the Cahalathites set out carrying the holy things. The tabernacle was to be kept, was to be set up before they arrived. The division of the camp of Ephraim was next under their stand, standard. Elishim, son of Amahad, was in command. Gamali, son of Padahazer, was over the division of the tribe of Manash. And Abaddon, son of Gideon, was over the division of the tribe of Benjamin. Finally, as the rear guard of all the units, the divisions of the camps of Dan sat out under their standard. Ahazir, son of Amishad, Amishada, was in command. Pigil, son of Orkut, Akron was over the division of the tribe of Asher. And Ash, uh, Aharon, son of Enon, was over the division of the tribe of Nephat, Nephetili, Nephetili. There, This was the order of the march of the Israelites' division as they sat out. Now Moses said to Hobab, son of Ruel, the Meditonite, Moses' father-in-law, We are setting out for the place about which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well, for the Lord has promised good things to Israel. He answered, No, I will not go. I am going back to my own land and my own people. But Moses said, Please, do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness, and you can be our eyes. If you come with us, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us. So they set out from the mountain of the Lord and traveled from there three days. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them during those three days to find them a place to rest. The cloud of the Lord was over them by day and when they set out from the camp. Whenever the Ark sat out, Moses said, Rise up, Lord, may your enemies be scattered, may your foes be flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. Fire from the Lord. Now, eleven. Now the people complained about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord, and when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the place was called Teberah, because fire from the Lord had burned among them. Quail from the Lord. The rabble with them began to carve 
crave other food. And again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manin. The manin was like coriander seed and looked like re uh, resin. The people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. They cooked it in a pot or made it into loaves and it tasted like something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manin also came down. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance of their tents. Hello. The Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you? and that you put the burden of all these people on me. Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to, let, to the land you promised an oath to their ancestors? Where can I get meat for all these people? They give they keep wailing on me. Give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you are going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes and do not let and do not let my face my own ruin. The Lord said to Moses, Bring me seventy of the Israel el Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come in the tent of meeting, and they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with the with you there, and I will take some of of the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. They will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. Tell the people, concentrate your, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you will eat meat. The Lord heard you when you wailed. If only we had meat to eat. We were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat it. You will not eat it for just one day, or just two days, or five, ten, five, or five, or ten, or twenty days, but for a whole month, until it comes out your nostrils, and you loathe it, because you have rejected the Lord, who is among you, and have wailed before him, saying, why did you ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, Here I am among 600,000 men on foot, and you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the flesh in the sea were caught for them? The Lord answered Moses, is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together seventy of, the, uh, of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with them. 
with him. And he took some of the power of the Spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the Spirit rested on them, they prostrated. They prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men whose name were Eldadad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldadad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, had, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my lord, stop him. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Now a wind went out and from the Lord and drove quail in from the sea. It scattered them up to two cubics deep all around the camp as far as a day's walk in any direction. All that day and night and all the next day the people went out and gathered quail. No one gathered less than ten homers. Then they spread them out all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, and before it could be consumed, the anger of the Lord burned against the people, and he struck them with a severe plague. Therefore the place was named Kibberoth. Hatavaha, because of that, there they buried the people who had craved other foods. From Kibbutz Hatava, the people traveled to Hazareth and stayed there. That completes Numbers 9 through 11. Now we'll move into Mark 5, 1 through 20. Jesus restores a demon-possessed man. They went across the lake to the region of the Grazinus, where when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one would, no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the iron on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When Jesus saw when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied replied for we are many and he began and he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area a large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside the demons begged Jesus send us among the pigs allow us to go into them he gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about two thousand in number, rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this to the town and countryside, 
and the people went out to see what had, had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, sitting there dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who were, had, seen, had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man, and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people, and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell them this, the the capitals how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed and that does it so that brings us to the end of the Bible with Briscoe for today and tomorrow we will be covering numbers 12 through 14 and mark 5 21 through 43 father I just say that I just pray that this was a blessing for you and also a blessing for everyone who was listening. I also pray that they all return tomorrow and that we can continue the Bible with Briscoe. And in the meanwhile, have a blessed day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you.